What's up Planeswalkers, welcome back to the OnlyLine channel, where I cover cool and interesting decks, share knowledge, and discuss everything Commander. They did it guys, Wizards finally printed a good white weenie Commander. Delny is absolutely ridiculous, not only does she give all of our small creatures evasion, but she also doubles any triggered ability. This is like Roaming Throne again, but like... You know, it's a bit more tame than Roaming Throne, but only barely. I promise this deck can do some ridiculous things. I'm fairly confident this is the best Mono White Commander, definitely the best White Weenie Commander, and I'm really excited to share this one with you all. I love White Weenie and Sissy Card, and it, I'm so excited to finally have a Commander that can make it work. Let's go over our win cons. This is going to be a go wide deck trying to make lots of tokens, so our best strategy for killing people is going to be to buff those tokens up. Sky Hunter Strike Force is ridiculous. Melee is a triggered ability, which means it's going to be doubled up when we have Delny in play. When we attack with our little 1 1 creature tokens, they're going to get melee and melee again. As long as we make sure to attack all three of our opponents, all our creatures are going to be getting plus six, plus six. This thing is absolutely ridiculous for only three mana. Also, we have Balden Sentry Herdmaster. This one is especially good because it's not going to buff our power, so all our creatures will keep their evasion. And it makes it so that our creatures hit equal to their toughness while buffing their toughness. This guy absolutely murders everyone. Not only are all our creatures going to be really hard to block because of our commander, they're all going to be hitting for at least like 9. Next we have Angel of Destiny. Angel of Destiny is insane with Delny. This is just going to kill someone every turn. So the way it works is with Double Strike we'll hit twice and that triggered ability that makes us and the person we hit gain life is going to trigger two times. So we're going to be gaining twice as much life from this and just getting up to that 15 uh, life more than our starting life total twice as fast. It's going to be ridiculous. We're going to kill someone every turn with this super easily. And we have Illustrious Wanderglyph. This is going to make us two gnomes on each person's upkeep. That's insane. That is eight creatures a turn cycle. This is absolutely ridiculous. And then it's going to bu start buffing those artifact tokens. So it's just going to easily take over the board and take over the game. If they don't kill this thing, everyone is going to die. Delny also has access to a lot of board one-sided board wipes. We have the Battle of Bywater, as well as Dusk and Dawn. These are going to destroy all creatures with power 3 or greater. But guess what? We don't have any of those. All of our creatures are power 2 or less, because that's what our commander cares about. These one-sided board wipes are just going to make sure that we can swing out without any fear of being hit back on the crackback. Our final board wipe is also the Eternal Wanderer, but honestly, this board wipe is just like a worst case scenario kind of thing. We mostly want to use this for the flicker and the creature token. Let's go over our card draw. I stuffed a lot, a lot of card advantage into this deck because all of our cards are really low to the ground. Most of our spells are 2 or 3 mana at most. We have Esper Sentinel, probably the best mono white one drop in the game, and it's even better with Delny. It triggers twice with Delny, so they have to pay one two times in order to prevent us from drawing any cards. And if they can only pay one, then we still get one card. And if they can't pay anything, we get two cards. This thing goes absolutely insane with Delny. We have both Novice Inspector and Thraben Inspector. Of course, we have Skull Clamp. We're a token deck. We're making lots of 1-1s. We want to draw those cards. Archivist of Ogma. This one, you flash in, you're going to draw two cards and gain two life whenever an opponent searches their library. That's ridiculous. Like, even if this only triggers one time in, in the entire game, if you're drawing two cards and gaining two life and getting a 2-2 with flash, that's super worth it. Flump. This one's hilarious. It's just a little jellyfish guy. You can easily make deals with this where someone hits you, you're going to draw two. You can either give two cards to one opponent if they're really behind, or if you two are teaming up against someone, or you can spread out the card advantage, give one card to one opponent, one card to a different opponent, and you get two cards. Very nice. Mask of Memory. All our creatures are evasive because of our commander, so this is just going to be consistent card advantage. 
Spirited Companion. Very simple. Wall of Omens. Same thing. We have Circuit Mender. With Flicker, this thing is going to gain us a buttload of life and draw us a buttload of cards. Same with Inspiring Overseer. You can kind of see what's going on here. We just want all the triggered abilities on these little weenies that are going to guess give us incremental advantage, keep our hand full. Recruiter of the Guard can find us pretty much anything we need. It can find us our illustrious Wanderglyph. It can find us our Reverent Hoplite. It can find us our Sky Hunter Strike Force. It can find us our Skyclave Apparition if we need to remove stuff. This thing is great. We have Rumor Gatherer. It's going to double trigger, so we're always going to be getting that card draw just with one creature entering. That's pretty nice. We get to scry to and draw a card anytime one creature enters the battlefield under our control. The gaffer. It's going to be really easy for us to land like a, a life gain effect like Soul Warden or Soul's Attendant that make it so that we gain life anytime any creature enters and they're going to be double triggering. So that makes it so we can trigger this gaffer on each person's end step really easily. And he's going to double trigger. This is a triggered ability, guys. We get to draw two cards on each person's end step if we can get this set up. It's so insane. Mangara the Diplomat. If your opponents do things, we're drawing two cards for it. They cast their second spell, we draw two cards. They want to attack us and start whittling us down, doesn't matter. We're going to draw two cards. We're totally cool with that. It's crazy. Knight Errant of Eos. This one we won't double trigger with our commander. Doesn't really have any synergy, but just feels really good in a go wide deck to like get a bunch of weenies in play and then like convoke this guy in, find two more creatures. We also can play a little bit of stacks in this deck. Nothing too crazy, but we have Meek Stone because all our creatures are small power. This is just going to lock down everyone else's board except ours. Very powerful, only one mana. Suture Priest is a life gain effect for our gaffer, for our creatures, but also is going to stop people from going crazy with their tokens. If they're taking two damage every time they have a creature enter play, that's going to add up. They aren't going to be able to token spam with this thing on the board. Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. We run 44 creatures in this deck. That's a majority of our spells. So this is not going to hurt us as much as our opponents. And that's exactly what we want. This isn't a triggered ability. So it's not like it's not like Delny is going to make it so they cost two more or anything. But it's still just a nice little piece of tech. And then we have Michiko Kanda, Truth Seeker. This one is ridiculous. No one is going to want to hit us. Anytime a source an opponent controls deals damage to you, that player sacrifices a permanent. And with Delny, that's going to be two permanents. Two permanents every time they deal damage to us. No one is going to want to hit us with this girl in play. I already mentioned Suture Priest, but let's round out that life gain synergy. We have Soul Warden, Soul's Attendant, Oriok Champion, and Distinguished Conjurer. Distinguished Conjurer has additional upside of being able to flicker and reuse our ETB creatures. We of course also have some ways of triggering those triggers additional times. We have Blade of Selves. We have Panharmonicon, of course, gonna double up on all those ETBs. Not all of our creatures have ETBs, like, because Delny doesn't specifically care about ETBs. She affects ETBs, but she cares about any triggered ability, so she's even better than that. But we still have enough ETBs, Panama Con's worth it. We have Preston the Vanisher with our Flicker stuff that I'll get into in a bit. This guy is going to be doubling up on those creatures. It's going to make more creatures. We have some token. We have a token doubler in this deck, so it can even get more ridiculous. And then with Delny, it's it's just insane. Like you're going to be getting like six x value or some something ridiculous. Like it's crazy. And then we have Roaming Throne. Most of our creatures are humans. Not all of them. This isn't a dedicated human tribal list like my Inti list was. But Roaming Throne, still really good here. Still going to be putting in work. Doesn't synergize with our commander because our commander doesn't have triggered abilities. But enough of our creatures are humans. And pretty much all our creatures do have triggered abilities. So I think it's super worth it. Next, let's talk about our token makers. Because as I said before, this is go primarily going to be a go-wide token deck. So we have Charismatic Conqueror. This guy, if our opponents want to have their artifact or creature enter untapped, they're going to have, have to give us two vampires with lifelink. 
anytime they play a creature, if they want that creature to be able to be untapped, or an artifact. Artifact decks hate having their artifacts come untapped, because they can't use them right away to play more artifacts. So this guy is going to be generating us tons and tons of lifelink tokens. And we have the life gain synergy that I've gone over. So this guy really puts in work. Clarion Spirit. Whenever we cast our second spell, which we will do pretty much every turn that we have because our deck is so low to the ground, we're going to get two 1-1s one -ones with flying. Oketra's Monument. Not only is this going to ramp us and reduce the cost of all of our white creatures, it's also going to make us a 1-1 one -one warrior whenever we play them. Can't ask for more than that. Mondrak, Token Doubler. Easy to sacrifice two other creatures and give an indestructible counter to this guy. Sardok, Master of Buckland. This guy is going to make so, so many halfling tokens. Like, you, it's going to be insane. You're going to get two tokens anytime you play a creature. Like, all our creatures are power to a less. Like, it's going to go crazy. And then you can attack with this guy. He's going to have the evasion from our commander. And then once they can't block, we can just tap all those halflings we made and buff them up to, like, 100 power or something. Like, this guy can easily kill people. Illustrious Wanderglyph, I already mentioned, this thing just takes over a game, and Reverent Hoplite, this thing can make so many tokens, we're going to double up on that ETB, maybe triple up on the ETB if we have a Panharmonicon, or a Roaming Throne or something, this is just going to make us like 30 tokens at a time, it's ridiculous. Let's go over our flicker effects now. So we have Ephemerate, very nice. This can be a one mana draw four if we have like a Spirited Companion or Wall of Omens in play. Can't beat that. Better than Ancestral Recall, which is banned. So yes, amazing, amazing. Can also be used to dodge removal, very useful. Charming Prince can gain us life, can scry us, can flicker something. And it's gonna double trigger with Delny, so we can flicker two things. Distinguished Conjurer, I already mentioned this in our life gain phase. Felidar Guardian, double triggers, flicker two things. Amazing. If we get this and Charming Prince in play, we can kind of just bounce them back and forth because Charming Prince is going to return at end step and Felidar Guardian is going to return right away. So we can stack the triggers so that we have Felidar bounce Charming, which bounces Felidar, which bounces Charming. And since they're double triggering, we're going to get to flicker an additional thing each time that happens. So we can set up a situation where we're just drawing four cards each person's turn. So ridiculous. Lazel's Acrobatics. Not only is this going to dodge us uh, from board wipes, it's also going to flicker all our creatures, get all our ETBs again. It can even double flicker all those creatures and double the ETBs that we're already doubling from Delny. So it's basically quadrupling ETBs. Insane value. Teleportation Circle, just a nice way to consistently flicker something every turn. And I already mentioned this in our board wipe section, but the Eternal Wanderer can be used to flicker stuff. Notably, I use this in a game to exile an opponent's uh, Platinum Angel temporarily in order to swing for lethal. So it can be like temporary removal almost as well, which is pretty nice. Speaking of removal, we don't have a ton of single target removal. We have Swords to Plowshares... Soul Partition, Lauren of the Third Path, and Skyclave Apparition. You might think this is too light, but I promise you guys, when you actually try out this deck, with the amount of card draw that we have, with the our ability to reuse these creatures that are interactive in ways, with the amount of one-sided board wipes we have that we can easily run out, um... It doesn't. It really doesn't feel like this deck struggles to interact. I know this seems really light with only four pieces of single target, but I promise you guys, when you actually play the deck, it doesn't feel bad at all. Let's go over our protection pieces and our reanimation pieces. I already mentioned Ephemerate. We also have Mother of Runes, Lightning Greaves, Selfless Spirit, Clever Concealment, and Lazel's Acrobatics, as I already mentioned. And for reanimation, we have Ascend from Avernus. This just can very easily get back all our creatures. Karmic Guide. And the Dawn side of Dusk Dawn. And we also run a Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic is very flexible in this deck. It can get us two, actually, of four equipment. We can get Lightning Greaves, Skull Clamp, Blade of Selves, or Mask of Memory. All of which put in tons of work in this deck. And now we'll go over our ramp. We have Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, 
deep gnome terramancer as long as there's one green player he'll probably trigger once and in this deck him triggering once is him triggering twice because of delny so even if we just get one activation off of him we get two planes into play that is totally worth it knight of the white orchid very similar comes down, gets us two planes as long as we're behind on lands, which once we get to our utility lands, you'll see we have a couple ways to manufacture that situation. Pearl Medallion, Discerning Financier. This guy is going to make us two treasures on each of our upkeeps. Wand of the World Soul, any go wide deck, this can just do tons of ramp, and Solemn Simulacrum. This guy is going to get two basics for us into play tapped when he enters, and then when he dies, he's going to draw us two cards. Finally, we have a few utility lands. We run Ameria the Sky Ruin. Any mono white deck should probably play this, just going to let us bring back one creature each turn as long as we have seven planes, which can easily happen. We have Access Tunnel, can give one of our creatures unblockable, although Delny does a pretty good job at this, but just in case we're going up against another small token deck, we want to get in with something. This is pretty useful. We have Karoo and Lotus Field. These are really nice in this deck because they artificially lower our land count. So for our ramp, like Knight of the White Orchid, in order for that to trigger, we need to have less lands than our opponent. So these allow us to keep up in terms of mana production while going down in terms of land count. Very nice for white decks. I think white decks should be leaning into this synergy more. A lot of white ramp is catch-up ramp, but there are ways to abuse that. You can stay caught up with ramp while having less lands. We also have scavenger grounds and strip mine. I run these in all of my decks, as you know. And we have Urza's Saga, which can find a Skull Clamp, Soul Ring, Meek Stone. Urza's Saga is also another way that we can artificially reduce our lands in play. So once it goes to the third trigger, we sack it, we get Soul Ring. So we're going up in terms of ramp value, but down in terms of land count. So again, going to synergize with our Financier and our Knight of the White Orchid. This deck is insane value guys like uh, i've never played a mono white deck that feels quite this like consistent and powerful and just always doing things you never feel like you're out of the game with this guy delny just puts in so much work all right guys that's gonna do it for this video remember to like and subscribe to my only lands for the spiciest deck content on the internet thank you guys again and i'll see you next time Walking down the street, everybody looking at me.